year is 1012, Kasovan. An untouched, almost uninhabited region on the edge of the empire. In other areas of the country, villages and towns are growing fast. So fast that space soon becomes scarce. Real division leaves heirs without land and property. But we still have room here, and we could use the people. This is our chance. Let's invite them and together create a thriving region worth living in. Kosovan. Hello everybody, my name is Hammock. I'm going to be playing this game of life and land. The devs were nice enough to send me a key and I will give this a try. It is a simulated strategy management. I don't really know what the title of the game is. I guess we'll find out. Ah, good that you're here. I sent for you because I have an important task for you. The situation in the southern part of the empire is steadily worsening due to rapid population growth. It becomes more and more difficult for the common people. Arms, their arms are cut smaller and smaller because of their division of inheritance, while taxes remain the same or even increase. New land can only be gained to a limited extent by clearing or by developing less optimal areas. Even among nobility, there are more and more descendants that are not entitled to inherit. We are Kazovan, one of the large estates of the empire. We still do not have large cities and productive villages and are therefore insignificant. I would like to change that. I send you north, explore the region, be wise, and see that the people lack nothing. This way, new settlers will join you, and if you are open and decent to them, and their customs, they will stay. Build a community center to consolidate your position in the region, but also take care of your supplies, because the summer is quickly over. Good luck, I'm counting on you. Alright, nice. So this is of life and land, I believe formerly known as Circle of Kazova. And this is one of those games where you get to build a pretty little village. And this game is quite complex, I haven't figured it out yet, and hopefully you'll be able to figure it out along with me. Because not only do I have to take care of these guys, also have to take care of these guys too. The the aminals. The little the little dudes who already lived here. And I can either choose to have the people take up the priority of the area, or I can work alongside of the animals. And I assume that I would very much like to do both, but I am new to this, as I'm sure you are. And I probably will mess this up somehow. <laughs> Alright. Let me look at the little quests on the side. Ooh, little map elements and stuff. Alright, this is definitely reminding me of Eco, a game where there is a lot of simulations and stuff happening, so you have all these little maps and stuff. Information that I probably won't make very good use of right now, but hey, look at this. This is the temperature. All right, that's good. Um, so it's warm. I'm assuming green is warm and white is cold. Uh, all right. So maybe I want to build my people where it's warmer so they don't get the chills. Go where the land is m moistened. And the and there's dirt everywhere a little bit. <laughs> all right, uh, I'm gonna hide this map and follow the quests pretty slowly. So, let me open the building menu and place some stuff. So, we're gonna need supplies. There's already some supplies. Hey, we got some thieves. Hey, look at you, sheep. 
I'm gonna name you Fee 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 uh sorry I can't spell Steve and Steve. Dang Steve and Steve. Alright, I think alright, we need to get things to collect materials. So I'm gonna get the forest system. Ooh, I like this. I like this. This reminds me of um I'm trying to remember other games that do this. Uh they are billions. I think when you're like placing stuff, it like tells you like it's based on like it gives you the number based on things nearby. Um, this this makes me. I've played like a lot of Civilization VI, so this makes me feel like once I have a better understanding of what I need these things to be adjacent to, it's gonna make my brain set on fire just being like. I load into a map and I'm immediately like, all right, all these buildings, all this road, these these uh, gatherers are all gonna go here, here, and here. <laughs> so forest stump, we want this near some trees, I guess. We're just gonna sell in the starting area here. Better play it safe. I don't know what these arrows do. I'm going to assume that these are paths, like accessibility to it. So I should probably have them near roads and stuff. So let's put it like, um, all right, conifer looks like a type of tree. Let's put it like here. Um, let's get a gatherer's shack as well. Let's put that like here. Um, what else do we need? A uh, garden bed. Um, Alright, let's, uh, this one just doesn't require me to have it in any particular place, so I'm just gonna put it in the corner here. Uh, yeah, sure, we can expand which direction. Let's have it go back to... And... Let's give time for our little friends to build stuff here, because this is one of those games similar to, um... God, I'm recommending a bunch of games here. Uh, I don't, sadly, I don't play a ton of games, but this reminds me at least of, like, RimWorld or Oxygen Not Included, where you can't directly, like, group select, hey, you guys, build this, build this. They're gonna kind of do what they're gonna do, and I just have to make sure I don't build too many things at once, otherwise nothing's gonna get built. I believe I can also set priorities, but I am, again, new to this. So, um, yeah, I can, like, give this, like, a higher priority. And I can choose to give additional people working on something. I'm gonna just give, my, give like, a rush order to these things. Oh, I don't know who to choose. Erica, you go there. <laughs> you, you build this, please. Thank. Oh, look at them. Look at these little dudes. Carrying all the stuff, oh, they're a little bit chilly. Let's look at their needs. So this is kind of like a Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Start off with the basics. Survival gets higher. They want they have like alcohol. They want like better food. They want uh, less working hours, etc. Me, my entire needs thing is like this is immediately filled once I have like one plushie. face. These sheeps, yes. One of these sheeps is a Steve and Steve, which we should probably do something about. So I don't know until we get some more materials coming in, but from what I remember, just having a brief look at what I can do, I can build a wooden fence. And I'm gonna do this to, I don't know if, I think the fact that this closed means that that's probably gonna delete those things. I'm gonna plot out this place should be fenced off so that the wild animals don't do the thievery. Nice. Okay. There's also some decoration stuff which is like free to build which is quite nice. So I'm also gonna put like a little wooden torch here and like a Torch uh, here. All right, cool. Let's also turn on the night cycle. I usually turn uh, day-night cycles in these types of games uh, off. Is it on or off? Uh, right now. Wait. Okay, yeah, now it's on. I can see the shadows moving. Usually, I turn this like off, but 
I'm gonna turn it on just so we can see the like passage of time. Passage. All right, cool. I'm collecting some wood and stuff. So this is probably gonna take a while as I try to figure out how all this stuff is building. So I'm gonna leave these guys to construct all the stuff and I'll give myself a bit of like time to like figure out what I'm doing here and I'll be back in just a second. All right. All right. So I've drawn a bunch of roads to give myself a bit of a shape. Ooh, achievement. Wow, it's been that long. So I got the little fences around here. I started building some little houses, some little straw huts for them to live in. It's not much, but hey, it'll be pretty good with all this snow and rain in the early spring. You see, we got like seasons here. Hopefully, it'll get a bit warmer and a bit like more nice. But we gotta. I'm a little bit worried about getting everything, all the basics set up before like winter comes. So that might be a bit uh, spooky. So we got some people like exploring around the place. I also set up a simple stonemason. Um, just got one employee right now. And we have to name the town, I think. Uh, I'm gonna do a convention I usually do whenever I'm playing these kinds of games. And hey, what's, what's a city but not a big town? And what's a town if not a big village? And what is a village if not a big hamlet? And, uh, I can name it Hamlet, because I'm a hammock. <laughs> All right. Protection from the cold and the weather. Use the building menu to find out how to produce firewood. All right, how do you think we're going to make firewood, guys? Um, maybe we can bring up some fish. Or some fishing poles. And then those fish can get us some firewood. Hmm, how do we get... Do we have to grow the trees first? Soaring place. Builds a place to process wood. Through chopping and sawing, the raw wood is processed into planks and firewood. Hey, there we go. Let's go. Uh, I'm gonna have this near the tree place. So, I'm gonna say... Around about like here ish. Over here. Let's connect up with a road. I like my little snaky roads that don't fit into an organized grid. <laughs> This is a game that has stuff like all this, heat maps and whatever. If I if I like dam up an area here, if it's gonna like bring the mo general like land moisture upstream a bit more, probably even like drastically change the local like flora, make it into a swamp. That'd be cool. So I have to see when we figure out how to build it. I require these straw huts to be built. They require lots of grass and branches. The gathering station. Um, I guess let's. I'm assuming this is how this works. Let's bring the harvest grass priority up a little bit. hire another employee. That way we can get the thing set up, because I'm hoping this game doesn't have the scary things from games like Banish and whatever, where, oh no, your characters have been out in the rain too long, they've gotten sick, and now everyone is sick, and now it's scary. Uh, so I want to get these houses up ASAP. Right, 
Okay, let's do a house building time lapse, I guess. It took almost the entirety of spring, but we finally have four houses. Let's go. I have a message. Arrival. As dawn breaks, you and your little expedition reach a breathtaking hill. Hilly area you can feel in your bones. This is the place. Ah, this is lore. I like this. Quests. So we've acquired firewood. And we need rough rags. Use the building menu to find out how to produce rough rags. This seems like a tailoring thing, right? A rudimentary tailoring table. Uh, it might be unpleasant to craft rags or basic clothes while the rain is hitting your face, but hey, you have to start somewhere. I'm not too picky and use whatever wool, linen, and leather is available. I don't know how you get linen. I'm assuming by like plant fibers, grass and stuff, maybe. But wool we can get from sheeps. I've seen some sheep. And leather from killing. And I haven't seen a way that you can kill animals in this yet. Maybe you have to like, maybe it's that like you get it as a byproduct from like ranching them or something. All right, I have a tailoring table. I'm gonna put that like over here. So let's look at our people so far. Okay, some people's progress is better than others. Um, census. So census is animals. Okay, this the census seems to be. The amount of, I guess, just total animals, including humans. So this just shows the populations and such. So I'm assuming, if I keep going how, like, I usually do when I'm new to these types of games, these numbers are about to get a lot lower. <laughs> Except for humans, hopefully. That should get higher. Smile. Alright, we need to get more people. And also, alright... Ah, these are like showing the needs right here in an easy to read way. I need some ranks to withstand the cold and hot climate. Is available in the settlement rough ranks. Alright, so we need rough ranks. That's what we're working on right now. So that's unfulfilled. And we got three more people that still need protection. So I don't know how much protection. Alright, so these carry two resonance. We have 10 people total. Let me open up my calculator real quick. Um, Windows calculator. We need five huts. All right, we got four. So let's build another one. Another shack. Oh, not that. Straw hut. Let's build it like side by side along here. for that to build. I'm gonna have a little look around the area because our topography is quite interesting. It's not like a flat place where we can just keep outwardly like expanding. We're gonna have to worry about the accessibility of these like roads and paths. I don't know if I can build these kinds of like slopes myself. Maybe I get access to it later. Yippee! We got all the houses! And we got rough rags somehow. I don't know how. There we go, crafting rags out of the grass. Nice, I could have just read this the whole time, but I am not good at reading, smile. New quests, all right. Food supply. Don't forget to build roads, people walk fast on them. Yeah, I've been doing, doing a little bit of roadage. Um, hand mill. Baker's simple oven and campfire. Okay. 
to the hand mill is this. That way they can turn the grain into flour and then we can turn the flour into bread. Brought. Alright, cool. I think we'll have these things closer to each other because they're like relevant. We have some wheat up there, but that's a bit far away. We've got some wheat down here, which we're probably going to use. So maybe we can like have a road along here. Let's actually like plan it out via the roads to start off with. Let's have like some roads going along here. And then here, and then we'll have like some wheat being grown here when we figure that out. And then we'll have like a hand mill like here. And then a baker's simple oven like right next to it over here. Uh, everyone's getting a little bit a little bit warm. I think we're in summer right now. And how is the heat looking? Sheesh. Yeah, this place is quite warm. Uh okay. I think I see. So it's gonna be cooler by the water but also potentially cooler by trees and maybe the cliffs because there's shade okay is there ways i can create more shade oh maybe i can use the weirs later on to not only give myself a like larger supply of water but also to increase the dampness and potentially cool i don't know much about environmental science but a bit, a, a bit in my brain is telling me that's just going to make it more humid and that's just going to make it hotter. <laughs> I don't know, we'll, we'll have to see. Hand mill. And campfire. Let's have the campfire be like a bit more central like here towards like where the houses are so people can enjoy the campfire before bed actually that's gonna get rid of that tree and that's a fruiting tree i want to make sure i keep that put it like here-ish that should remove less and now we can use the priorities set rock a priority I don't understand this tip, but hopefully I'll run across it organically while I'm doing these other ones. Eliane is Eliane, 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 I can't read. I'm gonna say Eliane is on their way. Five days remain. Continue to explain yourself. Eliane arrives in five days. All right. Needs and wealth. Reach level two in population progression. We can get to like here. Oh, it went down a little bit. Um, yeah, we need more rags for clues. Uh, our equipment, our clothes are being made pretty slowly. Maybe we can hire more people to work at the tailor. Can I hire more employees? I'm assuming no, it's limited to one. So let's just build another one. this be like the little tailoring area it's right by the gatherers hut so hopefully you don't have to walk too far to collect all the grass assuming if, if this is their percentage yeah people are getting closer to having their needs met and then they're gonna have more complex needs later yippee we did it Yippee! Let's go! I just noticed the fire hazard <laughs> of having all these straw huts in a line with torches there. Don't worry, it's gonna keep everyone warm, it's fine. 
people always complain about the burning like the, the fires inside straw huts and outside straw huts but when it comes to winter they're like oh where are the fires <laughs> Ooh, so because we now have access to a higher tier of uh, people from needs and such, we can now build higher tier buildings. So we can now build small cabins instead of straw huts. Now can we use this to upgrade? Oh, maybe not an upgrade. This is, this is quite big. Heck. Well, this holds a lot more people. Who can start planning for a new district down here? Let's build, let's build one to start with. Just one cabin. I think that's gonna take a while considering the materials required. Let's see what else. A community center. That's one of the things we need. The main building for your faction in this area. A place to talk about politics, decide about future developments, plan complex projects, and gather relevant data. And the cesspit. <laughs> this is where we pick, where we put the thieving steves, the sheep that steal from the resource pile. They go into the. They go into the cesspit. <laughs> That's where naughty kids go who don't eat their vegetables, they go in the cesspit. A pit for all the dirt. People can dispose of the dirt and animals here. Well, you actually do put animals there. Okay, I didn't actually know what a cesspit is. It just sounds like a funny word. <laughs> Phew, it stinks. You better build a pit uh, a little way. Okay, okay. So it's, so it's one of those things. Okay, so this is probably... You get you make all the filth that you can then use for like compost and stuff But at the same time, it's one of those things that you get in these kinds of like town builder games where If you build it near people they're gonna get upset like I think in what was it kingdoms and castles if you built like charcoal Makers near people they would get upset because there's a lot of smoke so if that kind of thing exists, then there's probably other things like it, like probably advanced to like industry making metal and smelting. That's going to make a lot of like pollution and smoke that people don't want to be around. So you want to have like a dedicated area for it. So, okay. The problem is all of this honestly looks like amazing places to build anything. So there's nothing sticking out to me right now as like, all right, this is the cesspit area, you know? This is the slough of this place, you know? A simple barn, hunting lodge, ooh. The lodge contains basic tools to track and, and gut animals. Okay, so this is probably how I get like leather for like clothes and stuff. Hunting can provide large amounts of food and resources. They can upset the balance of nature if it becomes excessive. Okay, so this is this is when the kind of uh, dichotomy, if I am to use this word correctly, of civilization versus nature will come into play. Where okay, if you're having trouble with food, you could build a couple of these. You could also have a negative impact to the local wildlife, but you could also get a bunch of food, smile. Simple barn. Builds a simple barn for animals, it provides shelter, food, and water for the animals, and returns specific animals, products can be obtained. Okay. So this is probably where we can also domesticate, like, sheeps. Or their wool. Well. I think I want to make a well because I don't have much sustainable sources of water right now. I'm going to look at the water table real quick. Because we're quite dry right now, and I don't know what that means for a well. Like, would a well not work in a dry area? Or would that just mean, hey, you should build a well here? because it is dry and therefore it will get wetter because of the well. That's what I'm a little bit confused on. Because there's already water here, right? 
but I don't know what the water looks like much further down. Ooh, the dirt one's changed a bit. All right. Maybe this dirt chart is showing like great places to grow food. Because usually green means like a good farming place, you know? Just because this place is dry, and I want to also test to see if like that would make it like the area naturally wetter, or if the well just doesn't function in a place that on the chart shows as dry. All right, cool. Looks like it's creating water, accessing groundwater. We have more of a supply of water coming in, and just in case uh, fires are a thing, having a well close by to where all the thatch truths are, probably a good idea. <laughs> nice, people have already moved into the nice house. Uh, let's start building that community center, I think. So I was worried this was going to take a while, but it seems to have built pretty quick. Oh man, this is this is big. Let's place this here. Like I can see the like translucent version of it here. Let's give this time for this community center to be built and get like a nice little shot. Thank you ever so much to the developers of Of Life and Land to, for reaching out to me and allowing me to play their game. This game is great. I'm going to have a lot of fun practicing it in the meantime. Really ironing out the kinks because even though I feel like, yeah, no, this didn't go very well uh, while I was waiting for the, the time lapse to finish, two of my villagers died. Um, so I'm going to need some more practice. This game looks like it has a lot of depth and a lot of things to learn, and I think you will do a lot better than I did. 